Yeah, so Daniel John, you know, uh, some people call me DJ. I, you know, it doesn't matter to me. But uh, Maximum Sports Conditioning is the name of, of the gym that I own. And um, we're in Seattle, just outside of Seattle, Washington, uh, in, a, cool. in a suburb. So, uh, yeah, it's, it's great. Prime, you know, our, our, most of the folks we, we work with are, are athletes, um, really age 12 to 22, yes. I would say. Yeah. About 80% of our clientele, so. That's amazing. Uh, one of the things you said that really resonated with me, like I played football at University of Waterloo and didn't have the best career there in terms of my athletic career. But I do recognize how the fact that that didn't go as I planned really informed how I would coach in terms of the preparation, injury prevention, all those yeah. different things. And then a good friend of mine, uh, Mana Watso, played basketball and went on to play on a national team and was like the picture in the newspaper every single week dunking and stuff. And I was, and there was times where I was really mad because I'm like, we're both passionate about the same stuff. And his platform was with him being the star going all the way up. And my mm. platform was with trying to overcome adversity every week on the yeah. way up. Yeah. which still brought us to the same place. And he's running, uh, he runs Point Guard College and he's the executive director. He's doing amazing work. Okay. And, you know, like you, you're doing amazing work in your community and you have your gym and stuff. Isn't it funny how, you know, our script doesn't go the way we want it to, but we still land a place of making an impact. For sure, for sure. Yeah, I mean, it's just, you know, we got to adapt and, and pivot. You know, I, I had a, there was a strength coach that um, I like who, you know, when this whole COVID thing happened, um, you know, strength coaches across the nation, right? Everybody's scratching their head and looking around like, oh man, how are we going to serve our athletes and how are we going to do what we do? And, you know, he, he posted a, a little video just saying, hey, look, man, I mean, we, we teach our kids every day to be able to adapt. You know, we yes. throw different things at them. And I mean, that's, you know, you asked me about, you know, messaging and, and some of the things that I like to share with, with athletes, but, you know, resilience is, is probably the, the biggest one. Yes. And just, you know, and so just being able to roll with it and, and adapt to whatever people throw at you and, and, and pivot and, and still make something of it and, and still grow and, and still, you know, build in, in community and, and do what you can. I mean, it's a, it's a, it's a big thing. Yeah, yeah, yeah I love that. Um, so what made you decide to get into like helping like underprivileged youth and like that side of it as opposed to just going to, you know, pro guys and, and that sort of thing? Yeah, man. Yeah. So. Well, like I said, you know, I was never, um, I never intended on just really going the route of training athletes. And so I think my, what drew me to it was the, the coaching part of it, right? I mean, the empowerment part of it. Yes. Um, and, and so, and I, I love kids. And so um, after, you know, five or six years coaching at the university, I, I noticed that like, man, we have a, a problem here, you know, which is at the division one level the majority of the athletes that are coming in are have privilege. You know, they, they right. come from privilege and they, they've been able to, um, you know, pay for the private training and for the lessons that they've been drilling and they've been, you know, skilling and drilling for years. And yes. so at that time, this was like 2000, yeah, 2006 was when I left at that time, you know, there wasn't a lot, a ton of, um, just even information uh, about performance training for, yes. for you know, high school a athletes and, and below, particularly mm -hmm. those who, you know, um, came from, you know, underprivileged um, situations or, you know, didn't have money. And right, so right. Um, I, I actually teamed up with a buddy of mine who's playing for the Seahawks at the time, and he had this nonprofit, but hadn't really done anything with it. You know, so he hadn't run any programs. He, he wasn't sure... But he, you know, he had a, a passion for kids too, and so um, we connected up and and started. Um, a buddy of mine owned a, a, a facility kind of like mine, and so yeah. we ended up, you know, getting a bunch of kids from from the city and kind of where I grew up in in, in South Seattle, and um, bringing them out and training them and, and and teaching them about exercise science and you know introducing them to pro athletes and whatnot, and so. It went, it went, yeah, it, it was fun, yeah. man. I mean, it was, it was really, and, and that's really, you know, what, like, that's, that's always what got me going, man, is, is yes. being able to provide, you know, to folks who may not have the reach or, yes. you know, or, or, you know, the income or whatnot. And, um, you know, it's like me, it's, you know, being able to connect with kids that were like me and, yeah, and, great. 
you know? And so, um, but what ended up happening, I don't know if you've ever spent any time in the nonprofit world, um, yes. but um, you know, I've been on several boards and um, you, but we just, we end up growing too quick, man. Cause fundraising, you know, it's, yes. a, monster. <laughs> it's, it's yeah. a monster, man. So um, after, uh, you know, a couple of years, year and a half, I was like, okay, you know what? I got my own kids here. I got to be able to, I got to be able to <laughs> provide yeah. my own kids here too, man. So right. that was when I kind of scaled back and said, okay, you know, um, let me, let me start the business and then let's also continue to get back. Yeah, no, that's awesome, man. Like, I, I'm trying not to just like run all the parallels between our lives, but I start like my, my degrees in social work, I work with youth at risk. And that's yeah, what brought man. me that's what brought me into working in personal training, right? Like the conversations I would have over the bench press were richer than the conversations I had in the counseling setting. For sure. Right. So then I just like, you know, that's why I decided to just like leave social work altogether, jump into yeah. PT and grow it from there. Yeah. Um, but the thing you said in there, which is a catchphrase in our world today, like you've been in the game for a while now, but now we're starting to hear more about accessibility and inclusion. Yeah, for sure. And that's what you were doing organically back then saying, okay, mm -hmm. there is a dollar barrier here. How do we overcome that? How do we make this elite level training accessible to everybody? Right, right. right. And, you know, I'm seeing that's a catchphrase, you know, as I moved into Pilates now, that once again is a challenge. So how do we make this $120 an hour gig accessible yeah. to, you know, a 14 year old rep basketball player yeah. you know, coming from a low income family? For sure. For sure. And I know, actually, man, you know, and I know all of your, your followers and, and listeners know you real well, man, but I, I'm actually curious to, you know, you, you told me a little bit about your story, but how did you make that? How and why did you make that jump to because um, you were training, right? And then you moved yeah. over to, to Pilates. Yeah, yeah sure. Okay. Um, well, I, I was working for a big box gym. And before I even started working there, I had a personal training business. So I was I, I was doing some personal training on the side while working for a nonprofit and just bringing kids to the gym. And then over time, that just became straight training. Yep. And then a gym opened up in this area, and uh, I'll say it, it's Lifetime, Lifetime Athletic. When they came to Canada, I'm in Mississauga, which is just outside of Toronto. Okay. okay. Canada. So when their first gym opened, I, you know, I got the job there doing personal training as assistant manager, and we had an opportunity to do our Pilates certification. Okay. Right. So then Peak Pilates comes in, and they do they do like their full like mat reformer, like all the equipment you see behind me here. Yeah. Um, all this equipment. And I was looking at it, I was like, okay, well, one, there's no men doing Pilates. Two, there's no brothers teaching Pilates anywhere. <laughs> yeah, yeah, right? yeah, yeah. Um, So I figured, if nothing else, this gives me a niche for my personal training market. Mm -hmm. And I was mm -hmm. passionate about working with athletes. And I figured, well, this is something that would be a missing link for their performance. Because when I was playing football, I went to Cairo and, you know, my back was really bothering me. And he basically said, well, if you stop playing football, you'll feel better. And I was like, mm, not going to try that, right? So um, so I started doing Pilates on my own, took a special interest course, got a certification, never thought I'd teach it, but I realized that it was a game changer in my own body. Yeah, for sure. So, so fast forward to 10 years later, I do this Pilates cert and recognizing that now like there's way more to learn there. I start to integrate that into my, my personal training. And then just in the last year and a half, I really dove deep in it and took another apprenticeship with an individual who learned from someone who learned from Joseph Pilates. So, oh. you know what I mean? So like in, for those who are in the, in the uh, chat that are in the Pilates world, you know, I usually don't drop names and lineages and stuff like that, but just for you to understand it, um, there's like elders, people who learned specifically from Joseph Pilates, and then there's people that they've taught. So that second generation teacher or the person who taught myself in a small group like authentic Pilates, like the original order and all those different things. Mm. Um, so it's, uh, there's contemporary Pilates, there's all these different things, but I wanted to get back to the roots, understand the origins of it and be able to now layer that into my, my sports performance. So, so that's where I'm at, man. So I've just dove Sweet. completely deep on it. And now just uh, real men do Pilates is where I'm at. I have a studio, okay. which is a micro business within a, a performance you know, clinic. Oh yeah. And, yeah. Uh, I've had opportunities to work with, you know, the Raptors farm team. Some guys are, are, you know, going back into NBA this year. And, okay. uh, and that's, that's my area of passion as much as I have general population people. Mm -hmm. And uh, yeah, so that's what I do. 
Nice. No, man, I, I've never done Pilates, man. And I want to. <laughs> yeah, you oh, know, yeah. <laughs> I, I want to. We, we, we had, when I was um, in my last year coaching at the U, we had, um, at Washington, we had a Pilates instructor come do some, like, floor-based um, work with our swim team. Okay. And the, the swim coach wanted to, you know, incorporate it. And I mean, it, and I did a little bit of that and it was great, you know, when I did yes. it, but this, you know, 15, 16 years ago. And, um, and I'm sure it's evolved and I've never been able to use the equipment, which, okay. you know, I, I've heard is really good. So, <laughs> yeah, I'll, I, afterwards I'll mess you. I, I think there's some instructors I've had on the show that live in your area or close oh, okay. to you. Okay. that are pretty brilliant so yeah so okay we can definitely do something virtually but yeah there's some people in your area that are masterful oh <laughs> like, that'd be great yeah yeah, yeah. so yeah that'd be yeah. great so let me ask you this so how did you i mean how have you been able to make something like this accessible you know for for kids who don't have or, or people who you know who may not have access to it well i'm i'm really passionate about my city as well like mississauga just outside of toronto area i was like raised in this area so i've been i'm 45 i've been here since i was like two right so i've like served this community when i was working nonprofits. i'm still passionate about it you know volunteer with football teams all that stuff so right now i work with the city of mississauga as well and i have some classes on their community centers community center schedule okay so even now we're all locked down i still do it virtually and you know that's like 15 bucks for you to come into a class and mm -hmm. uh, and even now virtually the city's been amazing and had free virtual classes so every wednesday night 5 30 i do an online class that anyone can sign up for and i had 140 people in the class yesterday what 140 oh that's beautiful bro so and that's beautiful that's what i'm saying like i'm not like by no means i'm like look i got 140 people in my class i'm like that's 140 people moving like yeah. i mean like you get it man like that's 140 people moving yeah yeah so you know so it's not even if i like i'm not looking at metrics and how do i flip that into paid sessions and stuff like that's accessibility piece for me if i can get 140 people moving per week in my city yeah. like that's golden yeah yeah no doubt i mean that's and that's a challenge i think with our, my business here it's um and can, you know performance training i mean you need space right and you need you know, there's specialized equipment and whatnot and so i think really what i've you know had to resort to since i started this was like you know trying to get kids you know across the water over here to yes. uh, to be able to train and comp them and uh every once in a while we'll be able to go to you know a site or a school Yes. you know and work with them but um it's man the virtual part is hard it is <laughs> for, hard when, yeah. you, when you're doing performance training man it, it's hard you know it, it's, yeah yeah um that's one thing i you know i think that we me personally i struggle with a little bit i mean i, I just because it still seems you know it's still it's so impersonal to me i mean i'm a you know we're people people right yeah, you know we're we like hands-on and we're yeah and getting people revved up and going and yeah and so um that's you know that's been kind of a hard adjustment you know but um but still you know we, we we find ways to you know we find ways to reach kids and 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 folks who, who otherwise couldn't afford it which man we you know gotta be able to do it yeah absolutely and and this is this is you know i i'm not saying that i have a script um but i'm gonna throw you something that i didn't prep you on at all oh that's all right oh yeah no worries man we're rolling yeah so let's talk about mentoring for a second yeah. How how effective have you been at duplicating yourself with your business? Yeah, for sure. So <laughs> when I started, you know, I'm, yeah. I'm, I guess I'm uh, yeah, 14 years in. When I started, I struggled. Yeah. Okay. Yeah. It was yeah. it was a struggle. We, um, you know, it. Um, I had some some great people, but keeping great people is 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 really hard. And then I had, you know. Um, most gym owners will tell you, you know, sometimes you hire the wrong people, yeah. <laughs> you know, that can, <laughs> right. can damage your business. And so, you know, I, I went through through that too, and, and I learned a lot, made a ton of mistakes, and then um, finally started to kind of get into a rhythm. And I brought um, one one of my, my coaches on, um, who's, who's here now, who's just been fabulous. Like everybody I got now has just been fabulous. And that was like in 2000, 12, I guess, or 2013, 2012, 2013, something around there. Yeah. yeah. And, um, you know, since I brought him in, I started to kind of, you know, learn and figure out, okay, what are the things that are going to be necessary to really to be able to grow and to be able to, 
um, shape this thing into what I, you know, I think it can be. And, yes. um, and so, you know, for the past seven years, six, seven years, you know, I'm, I'm pretty particular in, in who I bring in, but the people that are here now are just, they're fabulous, you know, and, yeah. Yeah. um, you know, we've got a lot of brown faces here in an industry, especially in, in our area too, that where, we, you know, we don't see, I know you don't see a lot of it, Pilates, but we don't see a lot of them, in, you know, around here either. Yeah. And, um, you know, and I, I, one of my coaches also is fluent in Japanese. I mean, and we're, you know, I, so I, I try to make that a, um, you know, real uh, important part of, of who, you know, we I, I bring on and, 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 and mentor. Yeah, yeah want to make sure that everything is diverse and and that everybody's represented so you know the 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 mentorship piece is was always a challenge it took it took quite a while i mean mentoring athletes and and you know kids is that's that's easy but but you know <laughs> mentoring, <laughs> mentoring like you know staff and, and people who are going to work with yeah. you you know that's a different game that's a different game yeah exactly have you had any athletes go off be successful come back and say i'm going to give back and, and do the repeat rinse and repeat that yeah, quite a bit. That's, that's yeah. such a win, eh? Yeah, yeah. yeah it's, a be it's a beautiful thing, too. I mean, I mean, when I, you know, when I first left um, Washington, you know, I guess the, I started working with some athletes that were like, I guess, 16, 17 at the time, and we're now just about like, you know, 30, and they've got their own families. And so yeah, I've kind of seen this, right, this whole evolution, yes. you know, of, of kids that were trained they go to college they play and they you know they come back they start coaching and they get into their professions and then they have families and all that and so for me i mean you you know you've been doing this a long time too bro you're like yeah, my yeah. age you know <laughs> so <laughs> you, you know you love to see that the evolution absolutely yeah absolutely and that's like that's the thing i'm just taking a moment to just celebrate that because we get so caught up in the weeds of just trying to run our business and then try and speak to stuff in social media like can we yeah. back for Uh, yeah, yeah, it's like, yeah. Can we sit back for a moment and just, just enjoy what we have, right? You know, be grateful for for the, the amazing work that you're doing that 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 we have going on here. Like, it's it's awesome, man. Like, it is such a treat to be working in this field. Like, we could be just doing data entry, making six figures, and hating our lives somewhere. Yeah, no, absolutely, man. I mean, you know, to be up and to be, you know, and and this the the conversations and the connection, you know, with with yeah. people that we we get to have. I mean, and I think. You know, as I've gotten older and as, um, you know, we the business has evolved, um, you know, I've, I've I started working with more general pop folks and, and really, you know, really that that um, happened because we had a lot of, you know, some of the parents whose kids were working out right, right, here, yeah. had, you know, said, hey, well, you know, I'd like to do some of this, too. And, and so, you know, relationships, building relationships has been a big, big part of, of what we do. And 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 honestly, that's a lot of you know that's that's a big reason why i i started um that the instagram page was because of the conversations that i was mm -hmm. having with just everybody here particularly after george floyd you know and right, right. um it's always been you know something that i enjoy talking about and i've i've got a lot of experience in the area but you know i i don't know how it was for you but i didn't find that a lot of um particularly white folks were really ready for um, ready to have that deep conversation and um, and really listen and hear and and want to to make a change until we're all you know stuck at home and here we have this public lynching going on you know right. and yeah. that it's like oh wow you know everything you know this <laughs> this movement police have been doing this to the black community since it, the, its inception but still you know it, it like now finally there were yes. some people who were, who were awake and ready to make a change, you know? So yes. um, I, I, those conversations and that connection has been big for me. And well, what you said there is so key about you build these relationships and because you've built these relationships, people actually care about what you have to say. Yeah. Right. And now, right. and then that scope is wider and wider and wider. And you realize that what you're saying to this person, you know, offline is actually something that would be beneficial for people online. For sure. You know, yeah. and I've caught my, like, I didn't, I didn't sign up to be an activist and all of a sudden you, we're all activists. <laughs> yeah. Yeah, exactly. Exactly. And it's yeah. a beautiful thing. I mean, and I think like, you know, when, um, when all this went down and, and there were so many people that, that wanted to have this conversation, uh, you know, I had 
some folks around me saying, you know, some some black folks around me saying, like, look, man, I mean, I I, I can't be your teacher. You know, I, I'm, uh, you know, you got to go look this stuff up. And it's like, you know, we've, we've been saying all this for so long. And now you want to listen to me. I'm like, man, we just lost John Lewis. OK, if you want to talk about somebody who has been grinding and do Elijah Cummings and these, I mean, for their wow. whole life to try right. to make things better for us and for everyone, you know, now is the time. I don't care. OK, I'm. I, you can't talk about being tired. No. OK, we're not tired. We're, we, this, this, this is opportunity. We can't be tired. Our kids are dependent on us, you know. Right. And, um, so for me, it was just like just a wide open door. And, and um, I was happy to walk through it, man. Yes, absolutely. I've had um, like Sonia Herbert Price is a great activist, Pilates person, but you know, speaks greatly on this. And that's where that line for me, where are all activists comes from, because yeah. a lot of us don't embrace it in that way where we're going to start doing workshops and start, you know, engaging everyone in these conversations. But like the piece that I put up yesterday, your, your conversation with Kesa, uh about simply if you're like an introvert and what do I do with that and you say just call the store like how, who's on your board like can you say yeah. a little bit more about that because I love that there's strategies where we all have a way to yeah. make some expression yeah yeah for sure so um and this actually this came from you know my aunt and I were having this this conversation and you know she and she said you know well one of the things that I think that has really worked for for you know for her was that you know, there are there are lots of businesses, larger sized businesses that um, she gives her money to consistently that she yes. shops at and, and does business with. And so, you know, she's she can be fairly introverted sometimes, too. And so she said, you know, one of the things for me, an easy thing for me to do was to reach out to the businesses that I've given thousands of dollars to over the years and just simply ask them, you know, who who's on your board? Do you have any people of color that are on your board? You know, do you have people of color that are executives? Yes. You know, do just because it's an important thing for me as a customer of yours to know. Mm -hmm. And just by simply making that call and throwing that out there, yes. um, you know, upper management and, and the, you know. Like women in leadership, you're women, mentioning. Exactly. Yeah. Yeah. Leadership, absolutely. They, they think about it, right? And, right. you know, and we're both business owners. We know what customers come to us with a concern or with, um, you know, a question and especially consistent customers, we consider what they're asking say, okay, you know what, can we make this happen? How can we make this happen? Are we doing enough, you know? Yes. And so that was what I had, had talked about, you know, with, with Kaisa's that like everybody, there's a, there's a place for everyone, yes. you know, when we're trying to heal this racial divide and we're trying to, um, you know, make our society really better for everyone. And, and mm. you know, so um, no matter if you're outspoken like you like you are, Martin, or if you're mm -hmm. introverted and you you know, and that you're a little shy about having these conversations, there's something that you can do. Yes, absolutely. And the the other piece I've been saying too is like being in the fitness industry, we understand what it's like to celebrate progress. Yeah. Hey, you bench pressed 185. You're at 190 this week. Good for you. And sure. the same thing happens with this anti-racism work. Like we can have our arms crossed and say, what have you done for me lately? Or we can be like, well, hey, good job. Thanks for posting that. Thank you for you know, amplifying this person's work or, or you know, promoting that workshop on your, your platform, even though you're not doing it. Yeah. I think that for those of you who are watching, it's like, let's be in the habit of celebrating the small progresses that we're seeing people make day over day with this instead of waiting, you know, waiting for them to stumble again. Well, yeah. let's, see how, let's see how long, you know, what do they do after that black tile? Like, you know what I mean? Right. Like, we, we can sit their arms crossed and be negative about it, or we can celebrate the small steps and encourage people in those small steps to keep moving forward. A absolutely. And then there's been so many of those small steps, man. I mean, yes. you know, I think there's, uh, there was a TED talk that I listened to some time ago and um, they were, the, the person was given some data and, and one of the studies that was done was, how um, white folks viewed um, racial progress versus how black folks viewed racial progress. And so okay. um, what they said was that, you know, black folks tend to look at where we can be or where and where we need to go. And white folks tend to look at how far we've come, right? And so, yes. which is kind of interesting. And so sometimes for, for anti-racists and activists and people who are trying to make, make things better, you know, we, 
we tend to focus on, you know, how much farther we need to go and, you know, what more needs to get done. And, and we tend to forget a little bit about, you know, what has been done. And, and since George Floyd, I mean, there has been significant <laughs> progress. Can you believe, dude, I'm watching the, the, the NFL on Sunday. And I mean, here we are at the end of the end zone. I mean, in, I mean, most of the stadiums, I don't know. I mean, I was watching highlights and racism. You know, this is the NFL who we were just kicking and scratching just a few years ago to get to buy into what Kaepernick and the rest of the, you know, right. players were doing. And yes. now they, you know, I mean, and, and the NBA, I mean, how about the NBA in the bubble? Like Black Lives right. Matter everywhere. And just, yes. you know, for, for someone who's been emerged in, in sports, and that's a, that's a big, that's a big deal, you know? So huge deal. celebrating yeah. those, celebrating those, those little accomplishments, like you said, I mean, that's, uh, it's impactful right I mean, very impactful yeah that's true that's a great uh sentiment because i mean we do that we're, we're so guilty of that right like instead of just celebrating how far we've come so yeah i love that and akil augustine who was on on tuesday like he's a host for the raptors right and nba tv so he really has an inside lane on what's happening there and he spoke to leadership and you know like david stern and then and then um silver as well right adam silver in terms of how from the top down, they really initiated that um, that change and heard the voice of those from, for lack of better, the bottom up. So on from both sides, there's this conversion of trying to make that shift. For and sure. it's amazing, right? It's for amazing sure. those things are happening. Yeah, no, and I love it. And I think, so, and, and another reason why I really wanted to start um, trying to, you know, start the, the, the Instagram and, and trying to help people have these conversations is because, while all of that is happening, we also have this segment of the white population in particular that doesn't quite get it, right? All of the messages aren't quite connecting, you know, and so they, they see things happening, um, but then they, they can't make sense of, you know, some significant points. And, and, and then you also have, you know, I mean, we just saw with this election, you have a big, large population of society who is purposely trying to strengthen the system of, of white supremacy and that ideology, right? And so right. Yeah. There, there's a huge population of people that I think are caught, are kind of caught in, in the middle. They don't, they're not sure exactly what to, to think. And so yes. some of that sentiment was coming out, you know, in, in the gym when I'm having conversations with people and people want to know, I mean, you know, like I said, there's not a lot of black, you know, trainers and coaches around here. So, you right. know, you know how it is. Everyone, yeah, everyone wants to want your opinion. And <laughs> you're the authority, right? Like, you're the authority. <laughs> based on your skin tone, you're officially right. the authority. Yeah. Exactly, man, exactly. And so and for me, you know, I enjoyed having those conversations with the people who you might be conservative or people who don't, you don't quite get it and trying to come up with, you know, language that they can connect to and resonate with so that yes. they do get it. And once, you know, and then they will buy in, right? Yes. It, you, you know, so um, I think it's it's really, I mean, at least that's one of the areas that I'm passionate about when it comes to race relations and talking about race. I mean, it's not only our industry, but it's also mm -hmm. people who, you know, may not understand, well, what, you know, they're protesting after a cop kills a black man, but what's what about when a black man kills a black man? You know, what about black on black crime? What is, you know, where's the connection there? And what, you know, uh, I don't, I mean, I, I don't like police brutality, but I'm not sure how I feel about affirmative action. And where does that all, you know, fit yeah, in those together? Are hard questions. Yeah, yeah. Oh, totally. And like, yeah. you know, um, and, you know, diversity and inclusion, like, aren't we, you know, shouldn't, don't we just want the, the best people no matter what? And how does that work? And, you know, so, so for me, I mean, I love having those conversations. <laughs> yeah. You know, it's like yeah. in my wheelhouse. So, yeah, absolutely. And, and what that speaks to is that they see that you're a safe person to have those conversations with. Mm -hmm. And I think that that's one of the things that we need to cultivate is those safe spaces to ask those questions. Like, in full yeah. disclosure, like my wife is white. Yeah. Right. So yeah. now for her, when we get into conversations about like unconscious bias, for example, mm -hmm. she like when all this stuff started to really surface, she was saying she felt like she was wearing this cloak of guilt. She was guilty by association. And you know what I mean? Like all of a sudden you get the sense of like, you know, everything is wrong. And I was I ate and embedded in all of this. Yeah. Right. I mean, so then be able to create a safe space where you can have those conversations Ask sure. those hard questions. All that stuff is key. So I'm glad that you're 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 putting all that out there and we can have those conversations. 
Yeah, yeah, and then and then you know, and then where do they go with it, right? Where it's do they like, go with you know, it? I'm I'm a big proponent of of um, of trying to help people understand they shouldn't feel guilty. You know, it's like I don't like guilt. I think guilt and shame don't lead to to action. You know, quick enough. I think people want to just get rid of the the guilt and you know, like I I think to me. Um, when when I I, just, I don't know if it happened up in Canada, but after George Floyd, dude, we had there was people just like Venmoing black people, dude. I had a, a buddy of mine is like, he's like, dude, have you got your flowers yet, bro? I'm like, what? What are you talking about? Flowers? <laughs> yeah. He's like, yeah. Well, I just got flowers sent to me just because I'm black. Like, you know, like, <laughs> That's oh, bro. It, it was it was ridiculous. So I mean, to me, kind of you know, the guilt and shame drives people towards that angle, you yeah. know, where yeah, I think that sense of responsibility is yeah. what you know what we want to lean towards and i think folks like you and i i mean can help you know yes. connect with people and help them to understand that like okay feeling responsible for making things better is good right but right. just guilty about everything is, is you know we yeah. it's not so <laughs> right yeah don't just run from the guilt feeling like actually sure. like like i said in the, the pm like in the applies method lines talk i was saying about authenticity with it like i don't want to just see equity yeah. I don't want to see inclusion. I don't want to see diversity. I want to see authentic yeah. equity. I want to see authentic yeah. inclusion, authentic diversity, right? Like, yeah. That was beautiful. I love that. Like two I different things. Yeah. yeah. And it was, I mean, and I loved how you, you know, you gave a really, um, an accurate timeline, right? Of what we can expect, you know? I mean, this stuff, you know, it doesn't just go away when Trump loses. You know what I mean? This is like, you know, this is racial justice and, and, um, you know, healing the racial divide. I mean, there's there, I believe, com you know, race to be the most complex domestic issue that we have, you know, yes. and um, it, it takes time and it yeah. takes invest Absolutely. investment and it takes um, consideration and it takes self-awareness and mm -hmm. people have to really look, you know, look inward and, and, and ask themselves how vested they are you know yes. in making things and making a change and making things better you know absolutely absolutely there's a, a wonderful line that i had a lady say when she's on the show and being a white person who is a real leader in the fitness community she you know and we've heard this said before we need to just kind of shut up and listen right and just listen to voices like yourself who can speak from experience who can speak very educated to and stuff but then she went a little bit further and said an amazing line, which I ran with. And that is simply that we need to support, amplify, and connect. Yeah, absolutely. Support, I love support you know, like we're supporting the voices that are doing the work, yeah. amplifying those voices, you know, that are, that are doing things yeah. like repost, find workshops, put on your page, tell people about a forger, and then connect with those people as well. So it's not necessarily yeah. about us doing the work as much as amplifying those voices so I like you know watching some of your conversations the ones i posted when people have massive followers and they're you know white people are doing these things let them amplify our message like i love yeah. the fact that people are taking our offense for us and then yeah. using their platforms yeah and, and opening doors for us like that's beautiful like that support amplify and connect is definitely like Dude, just a it. great strategy Oh, I love it, dude. I love it. I mean, another thing that you that you said that kind of resonates with me too is just connection. It makes it makes me think about you know you and I and the other people who I'm sure are, you know follow you who are in the industry, the the training industry, the coaching industry. Um, you know, we have a special connection with the people that we work with. Absolutely. You know? I mean, when when you are when you see people through their most vulnerable and their most empowered states. You know, there's a bond that is is built and created there. So, I mean, I, I I'm a big proponent of of helping, you know, other folks in our industry understand that, like, you know, we we also bear some responsibility here of helping to share and to shape and to make society better because people trust us. Yes. You know, and they listen to us. We are we're, we're there to support them, and they know it, and we have their best interests at heart. Mm -hmm. And but because of that, there's a real there can be a real cross cultural and cross racial relationship built, you know, and, and so Absolutely. I think trainers like yourself and, and folks that are in the industry are, are at in a, an incredible position to do something about, you know, this racial divide. I, I, I started to kind of snicker to myself because I know you've had this happen too. how many times have you had someone who come to you and say, listen, I'm pregnant. I haven't told anybody yet, but this is going to impact <laughs> our training. So, 
<laughs> that like, just had, that, that just happened like a few months ago. <laughs> yeah, and you're just like, man, you haven't told like I'm the first person to find out you're pregnant. Like that's yeah. how much trust people put in us. Yeah. So when it comes to like this equity thing and this race thing, like we already have their ear, we have their trust, and they're gonna run with the way that we present it to them. For sure, for sure, for sure, absolutely. And and like. And once again, I mean, we we know that that change takes some inspiration and it takes you know motivation and and so, I mean, we see it every day. You know, you know to to um, be able to lift someone through you know their, um, like you said, the most vulnerable or their weakest state and and carry and help carry them through that. I mean, makes a, a big impact. And I and I really do think that, you know, um, that idea we can cross that idea when we're talking about you know, racial justice and, and, and healing, you know, that yes. we, you know, we can help people become, you know, empowered and <clears throat> motivated to change because that's what we do every day. You know, yeah. that's how we roll. Right. Exactly. Exactly. You know? And then and the flip side to that, like real talk, you know, as these things happen and then we see another police brutality, uh, Tasha Edwards was on here and she said, there's days you just want to call in black. Mm -hmm. <laughs> yeah for sure <laughs> mm. Mm. you know and and there's there's been so many you know sad there's, to say there's been, there's so, been many. so many and, and you know and it's funny there's you know when uh alicia and opal and those guys started um the movement in 2013 you know at, at that point um there's there you know there's literally been hundreds of thousands of people die at the hands of police since slavery was over. Okay. And, <clears throat> you, you know, to so many people, it, you know, in 2013, it was like, <laughs> uh, wow, this is really happening. I mean, like, just for example, Rodney King, right? Rodney King right. was so impactful because boom, and there it is. It's on camera. First time okay? recorded. Right. First time <laughs> recorded. Now we got smartphones, you know, and so we're recording it. Every but, it, it goes to show that people really hadn't been listening to black folks, okay? And that's one crucial point, part of healing this thing is that, you know, we, we've been, there, there's been thousands of books written on racism and the history of race in our country. There have been <laughs> thousands of talks and discussions and people, and right. professors, you know, teaching classes on it. But yes. yet still, we had this huge population. I, I'm going I'm to guess if it's a majority. I don't know, but I'm going to say a majority of people that were like, wow, they've been telling us the truth. You know, it's like, right. yeah. so, you know, I hear what, what, what uh, your, your, your uh, person Tasha. was saying. It's like, yeah. yeah, man. It's like sometimes you're like, oh, gosh, you know. This, you know. But I think I still think we owe it to, we owe it to our ancestors. You know, we owe it to the people that have just grinded all the other folks that have grinded so that we can even have share a platform like this right now. Yes. I think I feel like, you know, at the least bit, we owe it to, to them to continue to, to push forward, even when we're feeling weak and stressed and pissed off and embarrassed and uh, upset, you know, um, I still feel like, you know, that's when we got to find that inner fire and say, look, I got to hunker down. There's some things that we know that are working. We yes. got to just push through, man. We got to push through. <laughs> well, that's, that's an intersectionality right there. Like we talked about resilience like 40 minutes ago. Right. Right. But there it is, you know, there, there is. It is. I mean, I, and so this is kind of on, on another note, but um, I don't know how it's been for you. You got teenagers too, right? I got, you know, I got the, my son's getting ready to turn 15 and uh, I got stepdaughters 22 and stepson actually 25. So, you know, I've kind of seen like seen it all. And um, one of the things that I've seen that has shifted in the last, say, 15 years in particular um, is just resilience among among our youth, you know. And right. so this just the the ability to you get knocked down, stand up, get knocked down, you stand up, you get knocked down, you get up again. And it's just you know, and the understanding that this is such a marathon and, and you know, yes. not, a, not a sprint, um, right. that I find myself talking about that all the time. Because you know? there's a void? Well, oh, because there's a huge void. I mean, yeah. the kids want the, the, you know, they want the easiest, they want easy access, they want to solve the problem right away, and if they can't do it, they're moving on to the next thing, man. Yes. I mean, like, yeah. 
Well, that's you know, honestly, I, I agree with you hundred percent. And I've said this before on the show is that I took this parenting workshop when I was, they, when my kids were really young and it was the first time. And the, actually the only time I've heard anyone talk about teaching children poise. Oh, that's beautiful. No, haven't heard it since. <laughs> like, that's but that beautiful. Was, because that's it. Like, if you don't teach your kids how to lose with grace, how to shake a hand when they want to just cry and throw something, they'll never have resilience later in life if they don't learn how to lose with grace when they're young. For sure. I mean, and, and I'm, I'm really curious about that, you know, workshop that you took and, yeah, yeah. and how much more of that is going on because, right. I mean, you know, and, and I always, I kind of think of it as, as grit too. I mean, it's yes. like, you know, the, grit. just having grit is you know you can't get through life without it man no, and, right. and i feel like it's it's you know we're losing some of that with our youth you know but yeah. um but it does it, it and it totally carries through when we're talking you're talking about racial justice or, or you know you're you're talking about finishing the drill you know that we asked you to do or you're talking about finishing the 10 page paper that you got to write you know what i mean exactly it's, yeah. it's to me it comes down to just just having the grit to, to push through it. Yeah, absolutely. And right. And so as it's funny how we want to change the world, but like, you know, I have that, I have that same sentiment that you don't see that resilience out there in the world that almost forces me to turn inward for a minute as a dad and say, like, what's the message I'm giving to my kids? Because I know that I can't impact everybody, but I can impact those in my sphere. For sure. And if I can make these guys infectious with poise and resilience and grit. Yeah. And hopefully they'll set an example for their friends and that next generation. Yep. Just through them. Right. And, you know? Yeah. Just through their action. I mean, and it's going to happen. It's, yeah. it's going to happen. You know, it, it, they're absolutely, they're going to touch it, you know, at least one, right. That they, yes. they're going to see it and they're, it's going to resonate with them and they're going to connect and they, it's going to happen. <laughs> right, 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 right. Yeah. That at least one is one. Right. You know, and that's that was that's that was kind of my my thing with the you know starting Instagram too. It's like you know if I if I can help one person, yes, you know you, you change or at least evolve or you know do something to make things better. One person, then dude, it's all worth it. Yeah, yeah, yeah. Um, I'm still rocked by that John Lewis comment right at the beginning. Like, if we get tired and then think about his resume, we haven't even started. Oh, we haven't even started. Yeah, you know, I mean, did you did you watch the um? Uh, there was like a TED Talk kind of a, a discussion between Brian Stevenson uh, and John Lewis. Did you watch that? No, I got to watch that. Do you have that on your post right now? You, you know what? Here? I don't, man. I'm Like I said, I'm such a rookie. I don't even know if I knew how. I would know how to put it up. Bro. <laughs> okay. <laughs> okay. I'll put it. I'll put it in ours after. Like, oh, what was yeah, it? Yeah. What's his name again? I'm going to write it down. So, so, I make so sure Brian me. Stevenson, he's the one who wrote Just Mercy. Okay. Yes. Yeah. And man, he is brilliant. I've been following his stuff for, for a while. And, um, you know, he, the way that he discusses moving forward and the things that we need to do, I mean, he's so poetic, dude. Yeah. And he's, so he's, um, the attorney down, he started the equal justice initiative. Yes. He's in Alabama. Um, but uh, you know, I love the guy. And so he has this conversation with John Lewis and, and here, you know, here are these two veterans, who, you know, have just been putting in work for yes. decades, you know, and um, just listening to that, it's inspiring. So, you know, I, I, I do, and I think I, I think a lot, I turn to those moments, man, when I get tired and I get, of course. It, it up, you know? Yeah, man, this is our first week on the job by comparison. For, oh, for exactly, yeah. <laughs> <laughs> exactly, exactly. Yeah. But I mean, I, and, but I think the, the beautiful thing is, I mean, even like checking, you know, going through some of your conversations, like what you're doing is is beautiful, man. I mean, with social media now, there's so much of you know, so much of a, a wider reach yes. than than John Lewis and Brian Stevenson had when they first got going. Right. You know what I mean? Yeah. I mean, they're you, you're reaching so many more people with the conversations that you're having, and yeah. so you, you're having a huge impact. And I love that, man. Yeah. Well, man, I appreciate it. And uh, we just burned 56 minutes, man. Like, did we? <laughs> <laughs> I'm just like, hey, I'm just getting started. Wait, wait, right, you man. <laughs> Honestly, like we, like round two is coming for sure because like, like we didn't even scrape the surface out. Like we didn't even like geek out on the like, conditioning, man. Like there's oh, so man. many things we could have. 
Got it. And um, I, I just want to say this something. I really appreciate like everything you're doing, man. And um, much like my friend Sonia, who is this amazing voice for uh, the black community, you're so legit technically as a trainer and the things you do on that side too. Like, you know, we can't forget that you're doing both masterfully right now, man. So I just wanted to applaud you for everything that you do, man. Oh man. Thank you, man. That means a lot, bro. I appreciate yeah. it. I yeah, really I do. Know. Yeah. Appreciate good it. stuff, man. All right. So I'll send you the replay of this later. I'm going to, I'll definitely look for this Brian Stevenson piece and I'll, I'll link it in there. So, uh, oh, so we can get that up there and uh, yeah, good luck in your race, man. Like this is, like I said, first day on the job, bro. We're going to keep yeah, it going. Appreciate it, man. Then like minds, we definitely got to connect again, bro. Absolutely. Absolutely. Okay, All good right. stuff. Thank you. All right, man. Thanks, Martin. Appreciate Thanks. it.